It's the professional master chef knockouts. 48 chefs put their reputations on the line. And only the most talented remain. I'm last 12 in MasterChef Professionals. If you're not up for this, you shouldn't be here. Fight, fight, fight. This is where I've got to step my A-game up. Don't like losing. Anticipation of what's going to be behind those swinging doors is, is terrifying. Over the next three shows, the pressure intensifies. Only the best can make it to the semi-finals. There's going to be a battle, a fight. It's going to get hot in this kitchen. Welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. You are our final 12. Can I remind you that the winner of this year's professional MasterChef is standing in front of us right now? This test is an invention test. You've got an amazing array of ingredients right here in front of you to cook us one spectacular plate of food. The cooking today has got to be absolutely exceptional to get you through to the next round. At the end of this, the best eight will go straight through. The remaining four of you will have to cook off again for the final two places. One incredible dish. Two hours and 15 minutes. Off you go. The 12 chefs have 10 minutes to choose from a range of ingredients, including guinea fowl, pigeon, rabbit, tuna, sea trout, mackerel, plaice, clams, langoustine, squid, brown crab, and a wide range of mushrooms, vegetables, herbs, and spices. With so many ingredients to choose from, it can get a little bit overwhelming. They just need to think clearly before they start cooking. We've seen some talent in these 12 chefs already, but now we want to see this star quality start to emerge. 44-year-old Gary has been lecturing at a college in Glasgow for 15 years. I really feel I have got better. I can teach an old dog new tricks. I think that's really um, one of the reasons why I'm still in the competition. Gary, you did it! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Well, are, you, are you happy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I should be teaching a class right now. That's how mad this is. W what an experience. I'm absolutely buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. I'm just going to really work hard to try and stay in the competition. Gary's opted to use a beautiful crab in his dish and it's all about this wonderful ingredient. He's taken the white crab meat and he's, he's bound it with mayonnaise and mustard. And he's shaved strips of asparagus, he's blanched them and he's weaving them like plaits into a beautiful basket. He's going to put his crab meat down the centre and fold it over. He's also got a biscuit that he's made from the crab shells as well. I love the different elements that Gary has on this dish. I just wonder how this is all going to come together to make one uniform dish. Matt is a 33-year-old development chef working in York. I think you can see sort of the way that I've come along and taken the criticism from my first dish and through to the cooking for the critics. I was really pleased with that dish. My food sort of evolved through the competition and, and hopefully only to get better. What's your dish, Chef? I'm not too sure just yet, but I'm going to do something with place. I'm going to make a stock out of some langoustines, get real intense flavour in that, and just stick to my guns, really. Simple cooking, but with really strong flavours and a good palate. Well, now you've got to the final 12, where can you go? Got to be in it to win it, haven't you? 
If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. I'm not here to make the numbers up. Max taking a lot of focus on his source. He's used the place head and bones and the heads of the long steam to get maximum flavour. It seems like a very light dish. He's got to get everything perfectly cooked if he's got a chance of going through to the next round. Just got to allow my cooking skills and palate and... 30 minutes gone, hour and 45 left. Head chef Wayne has been honing his cooking skills for the last 20 years. One thing that I think I've got on my side is my experience. There's some younger guys out there. They may be still taking advice. Zoe. Yeah, it's fine. It's all right, it's melted. Thanks, Wayne. Whereas it's my experience that I'm putting onto the plate. What are you going to make for us? So today I'm doing roasted squad pigeon on the bone with a, a pistachio couscous, a stuffed uh, courgette flour with offal mousse, uh, some charcoal vegetables and uh, a pigeon sauce. What do you have to do now, do you think? I've got to prove to you guys that I'm better than everybody else here. Good man. Wayne is taking a lot of time and focusing on his squat pigeon sauce. He wants to show to us that he really can nail it and give us the perfect sauce to go with this dish today. I love the idea of the beautiful courgette flour stuffed with chicken livers. Sounds delicious. 31-year-old development chef Rich has intrigued the judges by creating unique and daring dishes. I'd say I'm probably one of the most flamboyant cooks as far as experimentation is concerned. I don't want to do classic food because it doesn't excite me as much as the modern and uh, like pushing the boundary stuff does. Rich, has the competition got under your skin? I'm really enjoying myself. I really am. I'm cooking with some great chefs, so it's making me push the boundaries a little bit. I'm a wild card, as it were, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's a bit of a wild card about you, actually, <laughs> yes. Rich has always been an interesting chef. Today, he's making a tuna dish, a beautiful fish. For me, the cooking is very important. I like it medium rare, still red in the middle, and see it on the outside. One of the things on his dish today that I've never had before, and that's a tuna mousse stuffed inside a courgette. Again, very interesting combination of ingredients. I'm not 100% sure whether they'll work together. Bit nervous. So who knows what's going to come out. Zoe is a 23-year-old junior development chef who has delighted the judges with her pastry skills. In this competition, I have got to do so many things that I didn't think I'd be able to do. Just spurs you on. Massively, I don't want to go out yet. So you know there's loads of good chefs in here, right? Yes. You're one of them. Wow, I'm, I'm not at home anymore. I'm here. What are you making? I am going to try and go a bit classic-y-ish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> classic-y-ish. <laughs> yeah, um, that's an Essexism for you. Um, I am going to do a, a leg of rabbit with um, some pancetta some cabbage, um, a stuffed mushroom and parmesan courgette flour, which I'm going to deep fry. Um, and the rest at the moment is slightly unknown. Do you know how much like I like it? rabbit, Zoe? A lot. Really a lot. Oh, no pressure then. Zoe really is thinking on her feet at the moment. She's not 100% certain of what this dish is right now. I just hope that she can gather her thoughts together and really cook us a great tasting plate of food. One hour left! Sorry, James, shouting in your ear. One hour left! 33-year-old James works as a sous chef at a gastro pub in Hove. It's like a door has opened in my culinary mind and it's everything's starting to flow out now. So it's now getting that onto the plate and getting everything spot on. Just need to push it forwards and see if I can sort of come out of my shell properly. Today I'm doing a seared bit of trout. Um, I've done a trout mousseline, which has got some dried shrimp in it, wrapped in charred leaf as well. I've got some samphire, uh, some sea aster, 
bit of crispy quinoa just to give it a bit of texture. I've got a few clams that I'm going to do in cider as well. You did well to get here. Thank you. You're going to keep on going? It's going to be like, you know, an Anthony Joshua fight. I'm going to take this lot on and I'm going to win. James is making a muslin with some of the sea trout. When you make a muslin, you also have to be very careful it's not too grainy. Clams in a sauce is, is a beautiful accompaniment for this fish. But James is also adding a bit of cider, so just a bit of sharpness into this sauce. This can work. 27-year-old sous chef Brenton impressed early on with an exceptional lamb signature dish. I think I'm developing a bit. I'm getting to have my creative juices going constantly at the moment. And I'm disagreeing with myself, agreeing with myself, uh, having arguments in my own head. And yeah, I'm developing as far as uh, being able to come up with better dishes. Brenton is using the pigeon for his main course. It's going to be cooked wonderfully. It's still pink. He needs to rest it. We don't want this bleeding on the plate. Bring you flavours of ratatouille and a beautiful sauce just to round it all off. I love morel sauce. When you get it right, wow, that can certainly complement a pigeon with ratatouille. Andrew is a 24-year-old junior sous chef working in high-end sports hospitality. So far in the competition, obviously, I started on a real low in the invention test, but I'd like to think that since then, I've sort of grown and got stronger and stronger. So hopefully that can carry on. Andrew's dish today is mackerel and crab. He's got to get that mackerel perfectly cooked. Andrew's also got a, a crab croquette. Crab is a wonderful, delicate flavour. So you've got to make sure you've got enough of there to really taste it. And he's also making a tartar too much lemon in that tartar, and it's going to overcure that mackerel before we get a chance to eat it. Just 30 minutes to complete your masterpiece. Rosanna is a junior sous chef in a Michelin kitchen. One of the youngest competitors, she wowed the critics with her halibut dish. I think the competitors might look at me, I'm a 21-year-old girl, and they might think, oh, she's a bit weak, she might crumble under the pressure but I've been working in a very high-pressure job now, and hopefully um, that'll stand me in good stead. Rosanna, what's your dish today? Uh, so I'm going to cook the rabbit leg. I'm going to make an orange puree. I'm going to make a rabbit sauce, finish it with cream and mustard. Tell me about the combination of rabbit and orange. You always need acidity in a dish, I think, and it just brings it a little bit alive. It's daring. <laughs> it's daring. Only a tiny, tiny bit. Rosanna's chosen rabbit, but rabbit with orange. This is a combination I've never had before. Rosanna's using the whole orange, she's making the puree, including the peel as well, so there's going to be a bittersweet flavour going on with this particular dish. I have had rabbit stewed with a little bit of orange zest. With an actual puree on the plate, Rosanna's going to have to get that balance right. 39-year-old food development manager Arnu has fought hard to impress throughout the competition. I still remember the skill test. This has bruised me. <laughs> it's like having a bad experience as a child. You always remember it. If I can keep my nerves together, I, th I think uh, I'll be absolutely fine. Arnoud, are you enjoying it? Are you scared? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm quite relaxed, actually. I'm starting to worry that maybe I forgot something. Got loads of nice food to cook. Couldn't get any better, could it? I like your approach, Arnu. I like your approach. What are you making? So I'm going to be uh, roasting a pigeon. I'm making a Madeira sauce, which I'm going to thicken with some of the inside of the pigeons. Potatoes. I'm going to do a little toast with some of the liver mixed with chorizo, uh, herbs. Love it. There's a lovely French element about this dish that I love. Beautiful pigeon Madeira sauce, which is going to finish with the liver and the heart of the, of the pigeon itself. A great traditional way of finishing off a sauce. I love the sound of this dish. I really do. 37-year-old Max is head chef at a gastro pub in London. Max, so far in the competition, is a chef that's had to, to try and refine his food. He's getting there. Max is cooking the guinea fowl on the bow. 
This is the great way to, to cook this beautiful bird because it keeps it from drying out. Serving it with port sauce with polenta chips, fantastic, perfect to complement to this type of dish. It's got to deliver the flavours and it's got to look good too. Max, do you feel you have a point to prove with, with your food? Yeah, definitely. I seem to always deliver flavour, so that's not really sort of something I'm concentrating on. It's um, presentation. It's presentation, yeah. Twenty-four-year-old Ellie has impressed right from the start with her refined, precise cooking. I haven't really had a social life. It's been constantly kitchen. Days off, well, they don't consist anymore, but then you have to do that if you want to get to where you are today. What are you making? Poached and roasted guinea fowl. I made a guinea fowl faggot. I've got mushroom puree and I've made a guinea fowl terrine. So I'm using the whole bird. I've made the sauce with the carcass and I'm going to add a dash of cream at the end. And what response do you want from the judges when they taste your food? I would like another 10 out of 10 from Marcus, so that would, be, that would go down nicely. I love the sounds of the dish, love the way Ali's working at the moment. She looks really focused. There is faggot on the plate, we've got the breast plus a terrine as well. She really does want to impress today and I really hope for her it works. You have five minutes left, just five minutes. Can't decide how to put it centre. These are the crucial parts. Just wait on my fish, but touch wood. Yeah, good, I think. It's just making it look nice now. Feeling uh, good, nervous, obviously. <laughs> I hope I've produced a dish that they understand today. Time's up! Stop! Stop! That was horrible. Wow. That was amazing. Sexy dishes, guys. Seriously. Yeah, some great food out there, man. It's awesome. I'm worried. Max has made roasted guinea fowl, a croquette, parsnip puree, parsnip crisps, polenta chips, and morel mushrooms served with a port and prune jus. I love the polenta chips, the little texture that you get with polenta. It has a really nice crunch. I love the cookery of your guinea fowl. I love parsnips and I love the parsnip puree. I love the sauce. I like the fact you've got prunes running through it. I actually quite like that. I really like your flavours. I've got an issue with texture. I find it all too dry and, and cloying. Parsnip puree, by design, is really thick and sticky. And then I've got a dry polenta chip. My mouth is just clogging up. I'm, I'm just desperate for either something sharp or a sauce that's less thick, that's a little wetter. Max, what you've done is, as well, mate, it's a good plate of food. There's just nothing exciting about it. You know, when I'm eating, I know exactly what I'm going to get. I'd like to have won all three of them over, but hopefully I've done enough to, to progress, but um, we'll just have to see. Andrew's dish is mackerel two ways, pan-fried fillet and a mackerel tartare, with a crab croquette, brown crab emulsion, pickled shallots, radish, samphire, and a lemon foam. The best thing I like on this is the croquette, with the flavors of the crab coming through it. The mackerel for me is slightly over. The tartare's fine, it's a little bit on the small side from the cutting point of view. There's hardly any dressing or sauce on the plate, not enough for this dish. I've got no qualms about it, but it, it's, it's not elevating me to the world of wow. It hasn't gone according to plan. Just annoyed at myself, really. But, be all right.
Ellie has served guinea fowl three ways. A braised breast, terrine, and faggot. Alongside a fricassee of cabbage, asparagus, morel mushrooms, and mushroom puree. Finished with a pancetta au jus. Sitting in a restaurant, any dish coming up to my table looking like that just fills me with absolute delight. The guinea fowl is wonderful and moist. The skin is lovely and crispy. The mushroom puree is well made and the garnish is also well cooked. The faggot is outstanding. The terrine is beautiful. The cooking of the guinea fowl is delicious. The sauce is exceptional. I love this dish. Thank you very much. This is happy, happy food. I like this a lot. OK. <laughs> I'm extremely happy um, for them to give me the feedback like that. It's really, it's amazing. You nailed that. That's... I'm on edge now, thank you. <laughs> Brenton's dish is pan-fried pigeon breast and leg with ratatouille, romero pepper puree, tomatoes infused with garlic and cherry vinegar, finished with a morel sauce. This plate is full of sunshine. Big colour, lovely presentation. The pigeon, wonderfully crisp on the outside, it's perfectly cooked. And what actually for me brings this together and those flavours of the ratatouille is the pepper puree underneath it. It really does remind you of what you are eating. That sauce is powerful. I like it. I think you're a chef to watch when you cook. You get the best out of the ingredients. Thank you very much, Monica. The whole thing reminds me of Mediterranean sunshine. It reminds me of Provence, and I love it. It's big, it's bold, it's got depths of flavour, it's got freshness, and it's got that lovely, that lovely touch of acid at the end there. I think the technique and skill is excellent here, Brenton. Great job. I'm a lot happier than I was uh, before walking up to the judges. I'm just glad that I got the feedback that I was hoping for. Wayne has roasted his squab pigeon breast and leg and served it with a pistachio couscous, a courgette flour stuffed with offal mousse, asparagus, charred leeks and morel mushrooms, finished with a pigeon sauce. Your pigeon is cooked beautifully for me. I absolutely love that. It's tender. I like your couscous that has a slight bitter finish. I like your sauce for me that goes rich, deep, sweet, slightly sharp. That also finishes in bitter as well. I find the fast in the, in the, in the, in the courgette flour is very smooth, which is very well done. Yet it's very bland. It's under seasoned. I find the dish under seasoned until I have some of that sauce and the cooking of the pigeon is spot on for me. Thank you. What I'm getting with this dish is a sense of the pigeon being on the ground. And I look at the couscous and it's almost like feed. I get that and I, I find this rusticness of that claw, this top, I almost see a pigeon in a farm. When I eat this dish, I feel like I'm eating in a fine dining restaurant. Thank you, Jeff. Good dish. On a farm. <laughs> right, farm. Don't cloud my vision here. <laughs> right, farmer Wayne, well done. <laughs> I'm feeling quietly confident, which is, I think is the first time in this competition that I've said that. Rich has cooked tuna steak served with a courgette flour stuffed with tuna, galangal and garlic mousse, sweet potato puree, pickled vegetables, char-grilled leeks and pomegranate, finished with a clam stock. Great presentation. Really like your presentation a lot. For me, the cooking of the tuna is wonderful. Picking up a bit of sweetness from the pomegranates, the, the, the sweetness of the sweet potato as well. Uh, it's only a little bit, and it goes very well with the dish. I love the sauce, but it's too rich for such a light dish. 
I love the sweet bits that I get from the pomegranates. I love that. I like the sweet bits that I get from the sweet potato. I'm not convinced that clam sauce is the perfect match for the tuna. This dish is full of good cookery, good seasoning, creative thinking, new ideas. I really like this dish, Rich, a lot. Thank you, Chef. I have divided opinions, but wow, Marcus Waring. Tuna cooked perfectly, vegetables cooked perfectly, lovely flavours on the plate, great sauce. I couldn't ask for any more than that, really. Rosanna's dish is rabbit loin wrapped in bacon, rabbit leg, orange puree, black pudding, carrots, asparagus, and morel mushrooms, finished with a rabbit and mustard sauce. All the elements of your dish you've cooked very, very well. There's one thing I was looking for in this dish that I'm struggling to find, and it's the, it's the orange puree. Where is it? Is it the little dots that's yeah, in here? Yeah, li little dots, yeah. Okay. They don't really bring anything to this dish, and I was concerned about what it would do to the dish, but they're actually really not there. I find the dish is just a bit just flat for me. The legs braised the way they have are beautiful. They're succulent. They haven't dried it out. The vegetables are well cooked, but I thought a little bit more orange puree in here would have really lifted your dish. I hate to disagree with, with my colleagues. I really do. But <laughs> I love this. That is moist. There is the deep, rich flavour of sauce. You've pickled the bit of the carrot there, giving sharpness. I think there's this just bounds of loveliness wherever I turn. I just wish I had a little bit more confidence in myself to actually be able to put stuff on the plate and not, not worry about it. Arnu has served roast pigeon breast and a whole leg with potatoes in a creamed mushroom sauce, a crouton topped with pigeon offal and pureed roasted tomatoes, and asparagus, all finished with an offal and Madeira sauce. I have no idea what the cream is doing over the potatoes, and that is my only negative comment. Apart from that, I think your dish is delicious. There's sweet flavours here, there's bitter flavours here, there's a real strength of offal. I think that's delightful. Thank you. I think the sauce is wonderful, especially with the offal coming through it. The cooking of the pigeon is spot on. I think I can see the level of a skill that you put into this dish. Everything on the plate I quite like. It, it, it's all cooked very, very well. I love the flavours. I love the tradition of France that I find on this plate. Thank you. I'm feeling really chilled. Uh, I don't know whether I'm deluded or... But I'm, I've done where I could. If it's not enough, then it's not enough. If it's enough, then, then great. Either I'm very happy. James has pan-fried sea trout and served it with a ballotine of sea trout mousseline wrapped in a charred leaf. Cockles, gnocchi, crispy quinoa, and sea vegetables, along with a cider and lemon sauce. I love the clams, how you've managed to, to keep them still juicy. They're not overcooked, they're not shrunk. The chard and sea trout valentine for me, one is grainy and in texture and, and is also very, very salty. The, the sea trout itself, for me personally, I would like it a little less with the cooking. I'd like it a bit more uh, pink uh, than, than it is. Because the gnocchi, you, you've rolled it out, made it sort of quite firm and, and, and tough. I think the quinoa is, is a big mistake. Do you know what they remind me of when I had them in my mouth? What I mistook them for was a bit of grit that would come out of the clams. That's what it feels like. That's a big mistake. If you just take away the, the muslin and the knocking, you just focused on the execution of everything else, you would have nailed this dish. I got a bit above my station, I think, and I've just been a bit overzealous. Um, and it may, may cost me, it may not, I don't know yet.
Matt's dish is pan-fried place served with poached langoustine, pickled asparagus, and samphire finished with a langoustine sauce. Very simple presentation that personally I admire, I like. The fish is perfect and it's just moist and lovely. I love the sharp pickle that you've got in there, the pickled veg. What you've done to those langoustines, I don't know, but they are buttery and they're really sweet. What makes this dish work more than anything else is that extraordinary flavoured sauce. It's absolutely incredible. It's, it's big, but delicate at the same time. But I'm not going to forgive you for, the, for the, the simplicity of your dish. I want a little bit more. Yes, you've kept it simple and it does work, but I'm wondering what you spent the other hour and 15 minutes doing. I'm feeling nervous and apprehensive now. I don't want to cook again today, I'm absolutely exhausted. But, you know, if it's a competition and if I have to, then I have to, I'll just I have to raise the bar again. Zoe has served deboned rabbit legs, a courgette flour stuffed with a mushroom duxelle, mustard-flavoured pearl barley, cabbage braised with pancetta lardons, and a tarragon cream sauce. The rabbit is not a highly flavoured meat, and pearl barley, by design, is bland, so a lot is relying on this sauce. And I'm not sure the sauce actually completes it. When you use a rabbit leg, it's a cut of the meat that will dry out very quick. Now, you've taken the bone out, which has actually dried it out even more. The sauce I like, because I love the tarragon flavour, I love the creaminess of it. The cabbage is quite coarse and has a, a sort of a bitter aftertaste because you haven't really cooked it enough. The dish can work. I don't think you've executed it as well as you could have done. Yeah, I mean, it was really hard, a hard test, but ultimately, it wasn't my day. <sighs> Gary has wrapped white crab, mustard and dill mayonnaise in a lattice of asparagus and served it with brown crab salad seared squid and tempura squid, finished with a crab bisque. <laughs> I absolutely love that asparagus parcel with the crab mayonnaise inside it. I think that's light, it's full of crab flavour. You get a little bit of crunch from this asparagus. I think that's, I think that's great. I think your bisque, it's a heady concoction. It's a real deep and it's almost got a sweetness to it. It's so good. I can't remember tasting a better bisque than that. I honestly can't. The squid has been cooked wonderfully and that brown crab meat in the bottom is also something extra I wasn't expecting. The bisque is lovely. You have brought a natural sweetness into it, and that's a very, very skillful thing to do. It's just naturally brilliant and beautiful. I was happy with the feedback. I feel I've showed them, you know, that you know, I'm, I'm not your typical uh, college lecturer. We now have a big decision to make, because eight of you are going straight through and four of you are going to have to come back in here and cook again. Off you go. Thank you very much. Well done, everyone, anyway. Good cooking, guys. Good cooking. That was a good standard of cooking. Very, very good standard. And we've got a lot of contestants here to discuss. Out of the 12 chefs me, there's one outstanding chef in the kitchen today, one outstanding plate of food, and that was Ellie. I think Ellie just nailed it. Flavour, texture, visually, it was as pretty as a picture. Ellie had the best dish in the room, sails through. Yeah. Brenton is another chef that did well. The red pepper sauce was wonderful. I think he captured the flavours, the French Mediterranean. It was lovely. 
Rich is different, his food is challenging, however, he shows a great deal of skill mm. and it's never dull. I like Wayne's pigeon dish. That mm. was cooked perfectly for me. The couscous with a pistachio and that sauce really brought it together. Wayne's got to go through. I think Arno's a very, very strong contender in the competition. I love the flavours and the way that pigeon was cooked. Gary gave us the most delicious bisque. I mean, it was just beautiful. You can't deny the execution on the flavours of what he'd done were absolutely exceptional. So we're all agreed. We have six chefs that we consider good enough to sail through to the next round. We do. That leaves us with Andrew, Rosanna, Zoe, Max, Matt, and James. Out of those chefs, which four cook again? Which two do we throw a lifeline? What a fantastic start to knockout week. That was a fabulous cook-off. Well done to all of you. Eight of you did well enough to go straight through. Four of you are going to have to prove yourselves and cook off again for the remaining two places. The first person we would like to see cook again is Andrew. The second chef we'd like to see cook again is Zoe. The third chef we want to cook again is James. The fourth and final chef in our cook-off Rosanna. To the eight chefs who are going straight through, congratulations. Off you go. thought I would have to cook again. To be down to the final 10 now is incredible. Gob smacked, um, relieved, knackered, uh, need a pint. I'm so happy I don't have to cook again today. So happy. That would have been the worst thing in the world. <laughs> now you've got to put the last round behind you. We're going to ask you to invent another wonderful dish using the ingredients still here from the last invention test. Only this time, you've got one hour. As we said at the start of the day, two of you will be leaving the competition. Let's see you do it, come on. And now is not a lot of time to put up a really nice dish, so I'm just going to have to um, try my best. I was probably a bit too cocky in the last round. It's, it's bit me on the backside, and I'm not going to let that happen again. Feeling a lot better than I did coming into the first test. Hopefully I can uh, get that across with what I produced. The last round wasn't great. So there's no point dwelling on it. It happened. Been given a lifeline, um, and I'm just going to try and take full advantage of it. It's got to be absolutely spot on. There can be no more errors now. They've got to prove to us that they really deserve to be in the next round. Zoe, when we made the announcement, you looked so sad. Oh, of course you're sad. It, you, you know, you're standing in a room that you've put so much hard work and effort into getting into, and then suddenly it's, you know, it's really close to the end and it's, it's not a great feeling. Is it close to the end? 
I really hope not. Um, I haven't gone too wild of trying to keep it simple, um, but I just want to execute everything right this time. What are you going to make? A katsu curry uh, with um, char grilled aubergines, um, a sweet potato puree, a coriander drizzle, uh, and some onion bhaji scraps. Fine, fine. Why the curry? I love curry. Um, I love Asian food, um, and I love uh, spice as well. So I hope that I can show that part um, because I don't think I've shown that side of me yet in the competition. Zoe has taken a huge veal chop. She's battered it out and turned it into a schnitzel. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. A breaded veal with a katsuri sauce and onion bhaji. I really quite like the sound of this dish. I'm intrigued. It's got to be good. I'm just going to try and do all the elements really well. Um, yeah. 20 minutes gone, 40 minutes left. Come on, guys. Andrew, you picked yourself up? I think so, yeah. I definitely played it too safe, and that's not me. That's not what I do, so hopefully in this round I can give you a good plate of food. What have you decided to cook? Just a pan-fried piece of trout. Then I'm going to confit down some of the rest of it. Then I'm going to make that into like a warm terrine with yellow courgettes, just a green courgette and basil puree. Then I'm going to do like an asparagus and orange salad. Andrew, lots to do in one hour, brother. Definitely, but got a lot to prove. I love the fact that he's pushing himself and driving. There are lots of lovely flavours going on here. You've got the zest of the orange, you've got the trout, you've got the courgette on the griddle pan, so you get a lovely alternative flavour. This, this can work. There's a lot going on. I just hope it's going to be a harmonious dish. Obviously, there can't be any mistakes this time. You've got to put up a perfect dish. I've got one hour to do what is perfection. Take on board what everything has been said to me. Here's to the future. Hopefully, I'll still be here at the end of today. There doesn't seem to be any meat or fish on your desk. There's not. What are you going to make? I've got some heritage tomatoes that I'm doing different ways. It's going to do like a pepper puree. I've got some aubergines roasting that I'm going to do like a bit of a baba ganoush sort of style. Some feta that I'm just going to blowtorch. Crispy croutons to go with it as well. Hopefully it's going to show to you guys all the flavours coming together, all, the, all those combinations working well. Mate, that's a bold move, do it, doing, a, doing a dish of veg at this it stage. Is. Go home or go hard. The question is, can James take these ingredients to a level that's going to impress us way beyond a plate of tomato with feta cheese? The vegetarian option is tricky, but it can be done. He's got to get every element on this dish spot on. You've got 20 minutes left, please. 20 minutes. Rosanna. How do you feel being here, cooking up again? Um, I'm a little bit gutted, but, you know, hopefully I can come back. What is it you've got to do, do you think? What have you got to show? I've just got to be a little bit more confident in what I'm cooking. I think I'm probably a little bit nervous, and that's shown in my cooking. What are you going to make for us? Um, so I've made some pasta. I'm going to make um, an open ravioli. I've got tomato um, sauce going in there. I've got loads of um, courgettes. I've got some crispy leeks for the top. What else? Um, I'm working that out as I go. No meat, no fish? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing mackerel. It's on my bench, but it's, I'm not using it. Great to see her making her own pasta. I want to see how great this tomato sauce that she's making. But I don't think Rosanna is completely sure where this dish is going. There is time left. She can go back to the table and choose some ingredients. She can put the mackerel back on the dish. I just hope that this dish can continue evolving. I don't think it's complete. So you're going to use the mackerel? Yeah. Great. Yeah. You're incredibly no, I'm, nervous, I'm, aren't no, you? I'm... Calm your nerves yeah. down. Yeah. Just yeah. give us a great plate of food, OK? OK. Yeah? yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
Six minutes. Six minutes. Things coming together, so I think I'll be ready in time, yeah. All good. Um, not getting it done on time is not an option today, so... Everything seems to have worked out as I thought. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's it! Stop! Stop! Well done. Well done, group hug. That wasn't easy. That was hard. That was very hard. James has cooked heritage tomatoes three ways. Confit, pickled, and roasted. Served with rosemary potatoes, charred feta, aubergine puree, charred asparagus, basil leaves, and crouton. James, when I heard you were going to do a tomato dish with feta cheese, I was first of all surprised and a little bit scared. You've actually produced something better than what I was thinking of in my head. I think you've elevated the ingredients. I like the textures of tomato, the soft, subtle flavours coming through. The feta cheese is a delight because it just breaks all that acid down. To create this dish with so much flavour and so much variety, I think it's an absolute delight. What I do like is the different uh, flavours that you have in the tomatoes. I was looking for something else, a bit more texture, and then I finally found it in the crouton. Thank you. The eating quality of that plate, I think, is delicious. I think you cook the veg really well. I really like your aubergine puree. It's peppery. It's fresh, it's juicy, it's colourful, and I'm really enjoying it. Well. Wow. No, thank you so much. Thank you. I can't believe it. I... I wasn't expecting that. But you never know. There's still guys out there that, that could do better than me. I don't know. Rosanna has served open ravioli along with grilled mackerel, basil mayonnaise, a tomato fondue, courgettes, and crispy leeks. The pasta is lovely and thin. You made that without a machine. I think that was a great thing to be able to do within the time frame. The courgettes with the tomatoes and the basil, they, they work very well. And I think the whole thing has been seasoned uh, well. I just find it's all gone very watery because it's just seeping out from the tomatoes. I like the flavours of tomato and basil. It's the flavour of Italy. Mackerel, oily fish on top of pasta with tomato and, and basil leaves me a little, a little confused. There's some really fresh, vibrant flavours going through this dish. The courgettes are cooked well. The tomatoes add a nice tang to the dish. I just don't think the dish has been very well executed in its presentation. I think if you'd have cemented an idea down right from the get-go, you'd have cooked a lot better than this. I feel like I've let myself down a bit. I wasn't really sure what I was going into, and I didn't. I don't think I showed my best there. Andrew's dish is pan-fried sea trout, confit trout wrapped in charred yellow courgette, clams, asparagus, a courgette and basil puree, and char-grilled orange, finished with an orange butter sauce.
I like the way you've cooked the fish. Love the saltiness of the clams. Really enjoy the fresh orange segments. Really, that really gives it a really nice, vibrant, zingy lift for me. Don't particularly enjoy the orange juice in the buttery sauce. The creaminess with the undertone of sweet orange, I'm struggling with. I don't particularly like that. The comfy trout wrapped in the aubergine, I don't know why is there, and I don't think it's needed. The sauce is too intense in the, in the orange because it is raw orange juice in there. So it is very strong and, and very sweet and literally takes over everything that you're eating. It's not a well-balanced dish, I'm sorry to say, Andrew. Your asparagus is nicely cooked. Your, your clams are beautifully cooked and presented in their shells, which is great. You've got a nice crisp skin, but the fish has started to slightly curl. You've just given the base of the fish just a little bit too much heat. You should have taken away some of the ingredients and focused more on the main ingredients, and you'd have a good dish. The, for me, there's just too much going on. Definitely say I put everything into it, really went for it, but like they said, maybe I tried to do too much. I'm not upset, I'm more wound up at myself for not producing like what I know I can do. Finally, Zoe has cooked British rose veal schnitzel with onion bhajis, sweet potato puree, char-grilled aubergine, coriander drizzle, and a Japanese katsu curry sauce. Flavour, I think, is exceptional. The sweet potato puree, alongside that stunning sauce, veal breaded, crispy, beautiful and tender, aubergine. I think that dish is absolutely delicious. Thank you, Marcus. The flavours on the plate are delightful. You've got a smokiness and a little bit of harshness on your aubergine. You've got slight sweetness and you've got a little bit of heat running through your katsu curry sauce. I'd like some more chilli. I think that burning heat on your tongue just highlights the sweetness. However, I think you've got a very pretty dish here with lots of very good flavour. Thank you. The sweet potato, the sweetness that brings through, really, it goes so well with the curry here. Uh, this is a delight to eat. Uh, for want of a better word, yummy. Thank you very <laughs> much. I feel a lot more confident after those comments, but ultimately I really messed the last round up. I know that, you know, it's, you never know what's going to happen in this competition. It takes a little courage to come in here, pick yourself up, come in, do it over again. Well done, all four of you. Please, off you go. Give us a chance to make a decision. I've got to hand it to them, especially these final four. I mean, they're fighters, aren't they? They did a great job. When we announced which four were going to have to come back and cook again, Zoe looked so upset, I wondered whether she'd actually be able to pick herself up again. However, what she produced was lovely. To produce a curry sauce like that with so much good flavour, what a fabulous plate of food. I'm so pleased that she really came back fighting. Rosanna, I like the flavour she's presented. Tomato and basil, that's tried and tested. And I thought the pasta was wonderfully thin, but she lost track of what that dish was going to be. It didn't quite come together as it should have. I don't think I've shown my best today and unfortunately I think it's going to cost me. James's risk of a vegetarian dish was probably one of the biggest risks he's taken in the competition. That could only go one of two ways. I felt the dish was an absolute triumph. I think under that sort of pressure in here today, I think he did amazingly well. Let's hope this vegetarian dish has done me proud. I really admire Andrew, the amount of effort mm. that he put in to that dish. There was just so much on the plate, uh, for me, that the sauce overpowered everything else. But I love the enthusiasm. Obviously, I'd absolutely love to still be here afterwards, but 
it all comes down to how you perform on the day and obviously today I don't think what I did was good enough. I think all three of us know who deserves to stay. And I think they've proved a real point in this cook-off. Chefs, you showed fantastic courage today to come back in here and have an amazing cook-off. You're a credit to the kitchen. All four of you, well done. And unfortunately, we can only take another two of you through. The first chef through to the next round is Zoe. The second chef through to the next round is... James. Well done. Rosanna, Andrew, absolute pleasure to have met the pair of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's obviously rubbish to be going home, like no one wants to go home, but I never would have dreamt where I'd have got to, like the final 12 in the whole competition, so it's been absolutely unbelievable. It's been really amazing. I've really, really enjoyed myself, you know. I am 21, so I've got a future ahead of me, you know. This is just the beginning of my career, and hopefully, uh, yeah, I think I've done pretty well. <laughs> I'm so, so relieved, so happy. Final 10. I have that. <laughs> It feels absolutely astounding. I've got a thirst for this now, and I want to get through to that final three. Bit of emotion, bit of emotion. Take the road. Oh, God. Done it, mate. Done it. That's crazy. Next time, the knockouts continue, and the contestants will be split into two teams. For the first time, they will have to work together to create a VIP dinner. I'm going to plate it. You're plating it. I thought I had Arno plating. And then cook a standout dish to stay in the competition. Wow, what a punch of flavour. 